From Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay for the exclusive CUBE coverage for three days for IBM InterConnect 2017. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Ed Walsh, General Manager of Storage and Software Defined Infrastructure at IBM. Welcome back. That was a mouthful, wasn't welcome it? Welcome back to theCUBE, <laughs> welcome back to The Fold. Thank you very much. At IBM. So you're, Always good. You're leading up a big initiative. Take a quick second to talk about what you're uh, the general manager of, scope-wise, and then we'll jump right in. Yeah, so I run basically the storage division, which has uh, all of our storage from mainframe to open systems, tape, software-defined storage, and software-defined compute, but it's all under our storage portfolio. So development, sales, um, you know, run the PNL. Great, and the new innovations that are coming out, what's, ah. what, have, what have your eye on, what's your goal? You know, you're going to get a spring in your step, what's, what's yeah. the objective? So, well we talked probably in October, I was 90 days in, so now I'm a whopping eight months in. Uh, I think we kind of talked about it. I kind of, my hypothesis for coming here was, um, you know, look at it, you know, clients are going through this big change and some of your write-ups lately about the true private cloud and how they're trying to go from where they are now to where they're trying to get to and that confusion needs some leadership so it was a uh, confusion. IBM has the right vision but it's on cloud and cognitive, it's as much on-prem. Um, so we have the right vision to help them get through that and we have a history of doing that. And the second one was that we have a portfolio that's pretty broad so we almost have an embarrassment of riches of what we can do with someone when they're really trying to look to modernize environments or transform we can help them from anything from the biggest and baddest, but it really doesn't matter. The broad portfolio allows us to engage and bring it forward and then get them to the, whatever their path forward is, um, but we can give them that vision. Uh, and then uh, the one thing I was really talking about is if you could bring in IBM, what would be, if I could bring in IBM, the greater IBM, the true cognitive, the analytic team, and bring that together to bear for our infrastructure clients or inside storage itself, that would be where we'd have the trifecta and it taken off. So we're in the middle of that transformation, going very well, um, but along the same lines, is I have a fantastic product line. Uh, we're going to continue, in fact, we're putting more investments on that, not only on the hardware arrays, but as much on software defined and going all flash, just because of a lot of operational benefits. But then really, what we're able to do by bringing that large IBM behind us, um, IBM also did some interesting organizational changes in January. Arvind Krishna is now running hybrid cloud and research for IBM, so it's bringing the the growth of IBM behind what's on-prem hybrid into the cloud, so it allows us to play a very strategic role. So, so you know, a couple of Wikibon buzzwords, right? The yep. true private cloud, that we yep. talk about server sand, which is really sort of an instantiation of, of software defined. Sure. Um, really, the impetus is that customers on-prem want to run like the public cloud, yep. you know, with that kind of agility and yep. automation. No so what are you seeing, what is IBM delivering to yep. support that? Is, first of all, are you seeing that? And, so it's kind of funny so that uh, I do talk about that study a lot because I thought you know, the true public cloud, the way you coined it is the right way to almost just say it's not what you're thinking I'm about to say. So it allows it, but the study actually kind of, it's everything you get in the private and the public cloud and you want to bring it on prem, all the flexibility, all the development models, right? How you engage developers, but all the financial models as well, but bring that and then easily extend to the hybrid cloud. When you start going through that clients, that's every one of our clients. You know, we engage, they understand the value of cloud, they're at different, um, maturity levels of how they're using cloud, but it's all in their vision. So it's about, we do a lot of work to help people bridge. So where are you now? Let's talk about where you need to get to and have some meaningful steps to get there. So the true private cloud resonates with them. Uh, and then what we're doing is launching, in fact, we launched this week with Cisco. So we have a Converge offering with Cisco called VersaStack. Yep. But what we're bringing on is how do you make a private cloud as agile and has the same use cases specifically for developers or DBAs that you have in the public cloud and we're bringing those into the offering set for a Converge offering. So what we do around an API layer, so key use case would be uh, to do that would be why do people go to the public cloud? Business units like it because the developers, it's easy to use. They have true DevOps capabilities. They're able to swipe a credit card, you know, single line of code, spin up an environment, single line of code, spin it down. They don't have to talk to an IT guy. They don't have to wait three weeks or do a ticket system. So how do you do that on-prem? So what we have now in market is a, imagine an API abstraction layer that for storage allows all the orchestration and all the DevOps tools to literally do the exact same thing on-prem. So once you set it up, it allows the IT team, it's called Spectrum Copy Data Management, allow the IT team to set up templates, but through roles-based access, allow a developer or a DevOps tools like Chef or Puppet to literally, you know, infrastructure's code, a single line of code, spin up a whole environment, um, 
an environment would be, let's say, three or four VMs, last good snapshot, maybe data masked or not. Most of the time it's data masked and bring up an offense network. But literally it goes from, you know, on-prem, I just can't get it done. It takes me two or three weeks. Uh, so that's why I go to the public cloud for other reasons. I can literally choose where I put it, where it's the right place to do, but I can give them the exact same use case on-prem by just doing you know, the API calls, and they use exactly the same tools for development they use in the cloud, like Chef Puppet, Urban Code, Python How's the reaction scripts. been to that? Give us some anecdotal. So once you have that conversation, that's just one of the things we're doing to make the true private cloud come to life. Um, of course, the extension is SoftLayer in other clouds to get the people, uh, all of a sudden they see a path forward. Um, it's not as easy to, you have to explain it how it works, but the fact of the matter is they don't have a lot of tools now to make, we can bring down costs, give you a little bit more efficiency, consolidate it, but that's not really how a true private cloud is. You need the automation. So they're responding yeah. to it well. Um, in fact, it's the number one demo on the floor for us as far as systems. People trying to figure out actually how to do the DevOps on the prem, so. That's awesome. awesome. Talk more about the Cisco relationship. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting things going on in the storage business. Yeah. You know, consolidation yeah. and you know the whole VCE thing and then Cisco looking for yeah. partners. You guys selling off BNT opens up a whole yeah. new partnership potential. Sure. So how has that evolved and you know, where, where do you want to take it? So um, I think uh, match me in heaven between us, especially in storage and Cisco. Uh, if you look at the overall environment conversion, hyperconverge account for about a third of the storage industry. So we play well. There's no overlap between us and Cisco. Right. It's great. We're after the exact same accounts. And actually, from a you know, you think of the very top level of our organization all the way down, the two companies have a lot of the same cultures. And and to be honest, we're very tight. Um, so it allows us to have a great relationship. We've already had a good relationship. About 25,000 joint clients, which is amazing. Um, and then uh, what we're doing with VersusX specifically is we're putting the next generation. So uh, we have a great con uh, con converged offering that has all our all flash storage, but also software defined. But what we added is we brought in what they did with their clicker acquisition, which is called Cloud Center. And you add that on top, make it single, single click, deploy an application anywhere. Uh, both on-prem and the different clouds, and it makes it very simple for developers. We talked about the API layer, you bring that in to be DevOps in that environment. So we feel really strong as far as if you're looking to bring in a true private cloud, probably the best answer that we can do is what we do with VersaStack. And we just announced it this week, uh, uh, and also we uh, gave a preview, it's uh, uh, Cisco Live in Melbourne uh, a week ago, but uh, I think it's been a good uptake. Um, but it kind of plays to, when you know what people are trying to do, but you need to bring the automation, you got to make it self-service, and that really drives for the business units, as well as developers, that drove what we brought into VersusX. So we brought different assets in it from Cisco and IBM to make that kind of reality. John and I were talking earlier on theCUBE this week, and somebody brought up, yeah, the CIO, they really don't think about storage. They certainly not, they don't want to be thinking about the no. media, and the conversation yeah. shifted yeah. way off the media. <laughs> Even Flash now, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we get it. But you mentioned something earlier, which is, and this is rel very relevant yep. to CIOs, they want to get from point A to point B with this <laughs> minimal disruption, they don't want to have to buy a boatload of services to yep. get it done, so, and now you're talking about things like automation and self-service, how are you, what are the discussions like yep. with, with senior IT executives and how are you helping them get from point A to point B with minimum disruption? So the good thing about, you know, you think about the uh, IBM brand is as much about trust and helping people through it. So people give us just the credit to say, I can engage with them, we got the innovation, but also we've been through these eras. So a lot of times they're asking, how are we doing it? How are we transforming our company? How are we doing it internally? And then if you just kind of common sense walk them through, because of the broadness of our portfolio, we don't just have this point solution and every answer is, oh, you buy this box, right? We're able to have that conversation. And when you get the broader IBM together, that's where we're kind of differentiated, so they love it. Um, now I've been to a lot of, what I'll say, IBM friendly accounts, which is great, but also some people that have never dealt with us are eyes wide open because it's a new day. People are struggling with this big transfer, right? Um, how do you get from now to where you want to go in cloud is a big change. Those new customers, what are they getting wide-eyed about? What are they focusing on? What's the well, big focus? So we'll talk about what we do true product cloud, but really what you can do as far as data and what we're doing around cognitive is really telling, right? So, um, you know, the ability to actually show them with simple API calls to get more aware with it, you know, so I have a cognitive conversation that's an industry specific conversation, mm -hmm. really gets people lit up. And then it, in the end, it ends up being, okay, I see the art of the possible, yeah. Yeah. then how do I get from here to there? Yeah. And typically it doesn't start, well, I'm just going to go directly that direction. It's how do I help me with a multi-year plan to get to there uh, while I'm taking out costs, adding agility over time. 
But I would say the cognitive conversations are, uh, and especially with an industry lens, which is what IBM brings to it, is mm -hmm. really telling. So I got to ask you about the converged infrastructure market because sure. the, the hot trend that's in the cloud native world is serverless. Yeah, sure. So is there a storageless version? Because what you're basically saying with the true private cloud is you're essentially doing serverless storageless yeah. philosophy. Yeah. Is that, I mean, how do you guys rationalize the serverless trend? Because servers and storage are basically the same things in my mind these days, but I mean, you might disagree, but I mean. No, I think in general people aren't looking to the, the different components, they're looking for uh, a way to operate in their environment that's more efficient. Um, they're looking for use cases. They're also trying to have IT not be in the way of what they're trying to do development, but actually give them the right tools. So that's why, to be honest, go back to your true private cloud. I've been using yeah. that a lot because it really resonates with people, is how do you get that you know, same experience but on-prem? Because there's different reasons to be on-prem. It's like cloud native on-prem. You can get all the benefits of what serverless yeah. promotes, which is here's an unlimited pool of resources. Yeah. The software will just take care of it for yeah. you. That's DevOps. And, and we and, and doing or on true, prem and doing true DevOps, Chef Puppet, no compromises, yeah. exactly how you do it. So you change nothing for your developers, but now you're running on prem uh, or in a hybrid cloud because there's a lot of good use cases for hybrid cloud. If even if it's a born in the cloud application, you're making a, a web application or iPhone application. The fact of the matter is, you might want to test it against yeah. uh, the back end. So being able to do a hybrid cloud, bring this system of record data there to be able to do DevOps on what production looked like you know, maybe last night or a week ago, is much different than the current DevOps model. Well, it's a good strategy too. If you think about yeah. the true private cloud, the way you're looking at yeah. it, which I think is the right way, is you know, a lot of the things that we look at on theCUBE and talk about is three areas, product gaps, organizational gaps, and process gaps. The number one thing is organizational gaps. So when yep. you have that true private cloud yep. on-prem, yep. it's not a big leap to go cloud native public. Right. It's, it's seamless, in fact, right? Yeah, it's so, totally seamless. And on that case, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is we help people modernize and transform the environment, and the message is all about optimization on the traditional application environment. It's all about freeing up the resources. So a lot of the stuff that's we're That's the doing, innovation strategy. And that's yet, the creativity, that's the development. And if you don't free up your key resources, they can't be on the digital transformation and without the right skill set because they're kind of trapped in the operation. So a lot of the automation things we're doing are things that, to be honest, the storage team or the admin team would be doing. It's manual error prone, um, you know, error prone, but take it away, but also you free up the team. So it kind of plays yeah. to all those, it's as that much. That must really resonate with the CIO, at least. I mean, I would imagine what? CXO goes, okay, I can have cloud up on-prem and then train my organization to then start thinking hybrid workloads yeah. as they start moving hybrid pretty quickly. And here's the thing is, what, what do you have to change from developers? Tell me what I have, to, I have to get by the developers or DBAs to, and the answer is nothing. Use the exact same tool. So, you know, on stage, Lily showed me how Chef or Puppet, they're not doing trouble tickets or spinning things up, down. But um, same thing with um, deploying applications. It's a cloud center application. Set up the stack and deploy either on-prem, different architectures, both um, convert and non-converged or in different clouds and they allow you to just one click and deploy it and they deal with all those differences. But that's how you want to make it, you use it serverless. They don't have to worry about the infrastructure, uh, but also we're freeing up the team. So, so Ed, I got to ask you, maybe end on a sort of personal note. Sure. I mean, I've followed your career for, for a long time. John and I, we yep. call you the five tool star. <laughs> um, you've had the startup experience, you got technical chops, um, yep. you, you did a stint at IBM, yep. you went, Went to MIT, to, you know, came back with a, that big brain, big MIT brain, brought it to IBM, yeah. so, you know, pretty awesome career. Yep. Um, and no, by, by no means even close to over. What have you brought to IBM? I think I've known every GM of storage, you know, since the first GM of yep. storage at IBM. What specific, you know, changes have you brought, and, you know, what's the vision and the direction that you want to take this organization? Yeah, so it's a great culture, a great history of storage, so I guess I'm the, that would be the first outsider coming into storage. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's any different. I, I just have a very, I've been in storage my entire career. I understand it. Um, some of it is optimizing the current model, the particular portfolio and what we're doing. Some of it is just making sure we have the right things in the sales and, and working with channels, which one of my companies was an excellent channel partner. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just a perspective of uh, maybe a, a fresher look. But again, we have a great team, great portfolio. We're quietly number two in storage hardware software. Shh. Don't tell anyone, because we don't do a good job of getting the news out, but the fact of the matter is. Now we, we'll tell everyone. When you say don't tell anyone, <laughs> we're telling everybody. When you sell us nothing to tell everyone, we don't tell anyone. But we still get people, are you guys still doing storage? You're like, literally, we're number two by revenue, if you, and this is IDC and Gartner, uh, software, hardware, so we are a player in the space. We have a lot of uh, technology. I guess what I'm bringing is just maybe a little, um, you know, spice of vision, and then really Well, you guys have a strategy that's unique and different, but aligned with the megatrend. 
Yep. That to me, I think, is something that's been in the works for a while. It's been yep. you know, cobbled together. Dave always points it out, how the storage groups have changed. But the game is still the same, yep. right? I mean, yep. ultimately, it's about storage. Yep. Yep. Now the market conditions yep. are changing on the organizational side. That yep. seems to be the, Agreed. the the thing. Of all, flash is a product thing. Yeah, but also what we're going to be, you're going to start seeing is bring cognitive capability, so we're not going to call it Watson for storage, but imagine bringing <laughs> Watson to storage, right? Yeah. Think of all the metadata we have, so not only for support, but kind of insight. Um, you can all start doing more cognitive data management and not only look at metadata, but taking action on them, using Watson to look at images, so yeah. very interesting use cases that I think only IBM can do. I mean, deliver. I could just vision a day where I just voice activate, Watson, spin me up, more servers, and provision all flash, <laughs> Petabyte, done. It's a, uh, believe it or not, we can do a chat, but we have that working, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're looking for applicability of that, so. Um. And then Watson would tell me, well, you can't right now. You're not authorized. Gonna, <laughs> you're going to grab the Watson for storage URL. He's been grabbing URLs all day on GoDaddy. <laughs> Ed, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations on, 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 on taking names and kicking butt storage and the strategy, true private cloud, a good one. Love that research again from Wikibon. Yep. You know, kind of new, but different, but relevant. Very relevant. Thanks so much. Well. So thank, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks so much. It. Thanks. Okay, Thanks. live coverage here at Mandalay Bay here at IBM Interconnect 2017. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us, more coverage coming up after this short break.